everybody, it's Lord Tremendous here. This is it. This is what I've been working towards. The Alamo GT Battle Reports. This is Game 1, Alamo GT 2013. That's right. Let it be known that on November 2nd, 2013, Lord Tremendous was in San Antonio, Texas to fight in the Alamo GT. And the next five Battle Reports will let you know that I need more practice. But yeah. <laughs> no, they were good games. They were good games. But uh, here's the first one. And it's me, Lord Tremendous of the Warriors of Chaos, versus Gracier Green Green of the Skaven. And no, he didn't name himself that. That's just what I decided to name him. So now we're all on the same page. This is scenario one. And it's a lot of Spanish, and I don't speak Spanish, so if I murder it, I apologize. Mal de Ojo. Pick one character to cast the Ojo uh, on the enemy. If that character comes into contact with the target uh, with the target of the Ojo, all attacks auto hit. No need to roll. I have a Demon Prince with the Demon Blade. D6 plus three attacks, and if I roll ones, I hit myself. But if they all auto hit, I don't. There's no way for me to hit myself. Crossed it with the Tos. They agreed. So guess who was casting the Ojo for me? Uh, basically, the scenario objective was if you kill the model with the unit that targeted, if you kill the Ojo model with the with the ch character that cast the Ojo on it, you get the strategic objective. That's simple. And in this one, uh, in, in the Alamo GT, the rules that I usually don't play by, but you know, obviously we had to play by for this one was if the margin of victory, in order to get a victory, you had to win by 101 points or more. Uh, if you win by less than 500 points, though, the opponent takes two battle po uh, two battle points away from you. So, this it was 20 for a win, six, uh, four for a loss, and I think it was uh, eight for a draw. And so, like, if you won, but it was only by 300 points, then you'd only get 14 points, and your opponent would get six. So that was kind of cool. And that's if you didn't get, you know, the objectives or something. So, without further ado. Here's my list. It's my Alamo GT list. It's the same list I've been using for the past 30 reports because, damn it, I needed practice. And, of course, I had my Demon Prince, Lord Tremendous. He had the Marquezine. She was a level 4 wizard. Chaos Armor with Wings, Charm Shield, Dragon Bane Gem, Other Trickster Shard, Demon Blade, Soul Feeder Scale, Skin, and the Lore Metal. The hero choices were the Exalted Hero, Tardum the Herald of Zinch. He had the Mark of Zinch, who was my VSB. He was on a demonic mount that was barded. He had a great weapon, Talisman of Preservation, Poisonous Slime, and a Third Eye of Zinch. My Chaos Sorcerer, Ashkis the Muse, had the Mark of Slanesh. He was a level 2 wizard. He was on a Steed of Slanesh, the Slickness. He had the Enchanted Shield, Skullic Atom, Luxstone, Ruby Ring of Ruin, and the Lore of Slanesh. Because people need to die by it. My core choices were a unit of 24 by Chaos Warriors with the Mark of Zinch. They had a full command, hand weapon shield, and banner of eternal flame. I had a unit of 5 by Chaos Warhounds with poison attacks. My unit of 5 Marauder Horsemen with Mark Slanesh, band of musician spear shields, and throwing axes. And two chariots, one Zinch and one Slanesh. The Slanesh one being Orcish Elegance. My special choices were 5x Hellstriders, the Pleasure Riders, with Band of Musicians, Spears, and Shields. My Chimera. Try fiction! <laughs> and the one, the only, the Mutilith Vortex. <laughs> yes, I love my beast. My opponent's list was as follows. Uh, he had a Grey Seer as his general, who was a level 4 wizard, had Warpstone tokens, and used the lore of the plague, I think. Uh, he had a Warlord, who had a shield. Uh, he was a mountain on a Rat Ogre Bone Breaker. He had a Warlock Augmented Weapon, and he had the Armor Destiny. His hero choices were a Plague Priest, who was a level 2 wizard, using the lore of plague. He had a Chieftain, who was his BSB, he had a Halberd with uh, heavy armor and a standard of discipline. For his core, he had 50 Skaven Slaves with Hand Weapon Shield. He had another unit of 50 Skaven Slaves with Hand Weapon Shield. He entered with 34 Clan Rats with Full Command, Hand Weapon Shield, Light Armor, Warp Fire Thrower, Weapon Team Attachment. Uh, he had a unit of 20 Storm Vermin with Full Command. And his special choice is he had a unit of 7 Rat Ogres with 2 Pack Masters, Squeal Gnawtooth, Warlash, Warplash, and a Master Bread Rat Ogre. He had a unit of 39 Plague Monks with Full Command and the Plague Banner. And his rare choices were a Warp Lightning Cannon and an Abomination.
So he had a lot of stuff. The only thing that was missing was a Doom Wheel. These are my spells. Four from Metal, two from Slash, one from the Ruby Ring of Ruin. And yeah, I, you know what? He let me take pictures of his book, but I forgot to mark them. So I have no idea what spells he had. Kind of a lot happened over the day. I forgot. I apologize. So there's no slide with his spells. Here's deployment. As you can see, the rats hoard up in the middle there. And I'm just going to try to surround and destroy. Here's his center. Uh, on the left is a unit of 50 sca uh, Skaven Slaves. There's his, I think, Plague Monks in the middle there. Uh, the green one right next to the Abomination. That huge mess right there in the middle is his Rat Ogres. Uh, that big scary model in the middle there, that was what my Demon Prince targeted with the Ojo. So, yeah, all my hits auto-hit with him. And at Strength 6, I'm going to be doing some damage. Yeah! Uh, behind them are his unit of clan rats with his BSB and his Gracier attached. Uh, there's a little weapons team behind, or right next to them. And then 50 more Skaven slaves sitting in there just looking for love. Here's his left flank. There's his warp fire cannon and his unit of storm vermin. So, yeah. Here's my right flank. There's my unit of marauder horsemen. Uh, there's my dogs. Uh, right next to my dogs is... <laughs> Yeah. My center consisted of my BSB on the right there, with the Warriors, the Demon Prince, the Zinch Chariot, and Orcish Elegance right across there. And really the idea was get everything to slam into something uh, as soon as possible so they could stop shooting at me. And there's my left flank. There's the Hellstriders with Atticus and... TRIFICTION! <laughs> Yeah, I was going to use the uh, forest for cover for both of them. So here's top of one after movement, and as you can see, I did not get to go first, which is always good. Um, Basically, nothing interesting. His abomination went forward like 18 inches, 17, 18 inches. It was insane. And everything else came right after him. Uh, I'll be honest with you, it threw me off the way he just pushed forward. I don't know. He seemed to know my army pretty well, like the rules and how he worked, but he threw everything forward just to get into combat. Uh, maybe that was his plan the whole time, uh, but I think he underestimated my army a little bit. Or maybe I underestimated him. I don't know. Uh, during his magic phase, however, his grace here chokes on a warp token, takes a wound, so that was pretty cool. And then we go to bottom one after movement. And, yeah. My two chariots and my chimera slam into his plague monks. My warriors slam into the abomination because I have, uh, what's it called? Flaming attacks. I figured they were the best option. The demon prince and the BSB fail charges into the rat ogres, and the mutilith fails to charge into the slaves. So, not awesome, but not terrible. Meanwhile, both units of fast cav go flying up the flank, basically just to get cheap shots off at whatever they can. And yeah, that that's about it. The dogs just get in the way of the storm vermin, try to keep them out of the fight. There's a better picture of the warriors uh, charging the abomination. Again, it seemed like a good idea at the time. Right here, there's uh, the chimera and both chariots slamming into the plague monks. Uh, I think my, my chariot took uh, two wounds from going through the forest. Uh, if it wasn't the forest, then this warp lightning cannon got a hold of me. Something happened, but he has two wounds on him now. Uh, the Beast gets his spell off on the Rat Ogres and makes him stupid for the rest of the game. And I think, like, one wound occurs. I think I get, like, one of the, uh, what's it called? Uh, 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 Pack Masters or something like that. Uh, over here, I flub pretty bad. Uh, pretty bad indeed. Uh, I only kill about nine, eight or nine of the, uh, of the Plague Monks, but I take, like, one, two, three, four wounds across the, the three units. I, I did not roll as well as I had hoped, but I still won this combat. He's steadfast and he stays, but it was like, uh-oh, <laughs> time to step it up a little bit, guys. Uh, over here, the Abomination. Oh, my God, did I underestimate the Abomination. I am able to put a couple of wounds through on him, but holy sweet Lord, I take three, six, seven, eight wounds from this thing, and, yeah, my dice really liked my opponent. I couldn't stop rolling ones and twos for my saves, so I was a little nervous. I'm steadfast and I stay, but I lose the crap out of that com uh, combat. It's bad. So here's bottom or top of two after movement, and yeah, the storm vermin slam into the dogs, the slaves slam into the beast. 
Uh, the Rat Ogre slam into the Warriors just to kind of finish them off. Meanwhile, his other unit of slaves turned to face uh, my my Hellstriders because I guess he was smart and he didn't want me to slam into his rear. Although I had absolutely no intention of doing that. Oh, excuse me. But yeah, my, my plan there was to just keep harassing that unit to keep him out of combat. There's a better picture of the slaves running into the beast. Uh, I guess they were feeling brave. Here's the dogs getting... Just they're going to get slaughtered by the storm. But that was the plan. Keep them out of combat for as long as possible. Out of the main combat for as long as possible. Ugh. Over here, I'm just hoping that the warriors don't get pulped to a man. Uh, during his magic phase, he's able to get that negative one toughness for the rest of the game spell off. Uh, I just... At this point, I really didn't know what else to do. I, I didn't think about saving them because I'm pretty sure they're screwed. During his shooting phase, the Warp Lightning Cannon goes kablooey. Misfires one, and it goes back into the warp. And then during the combat phase, the Storm Vermin just literally face melt every single dog I have. Uh, I, I didn't get an attack back or anything. It was just too much for the puppies to handle. Over here, though, the beast doesn't take any wounds, and he kills off five slaves. I win the combat, they're steadfast, they stick it out. Over here, uh, one of my chariots, the Zine Chariot, does end up getting killed. However, the rest of my, uh, the, the other chariot and the Chimera survive. Not only do they survive, but I call, like, almost 16 of the Plague Monks. They're still steadfast, but they're not long for this world now. I rolled good again, finally. Uh, but it doesn't matter if they're steadfast because they break and I run them down. The chariot ends up catching them. So that's awesome. Yeah, not outstanding, however, is the fact that I lose 4, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 warriors to the Abomination and the Rat Ogres. Only 4 live, but they break and they get run down. Uh, when I get run down, I believe my Demon Prince and my VSB, who were lined up exactly next to each other, got hit by the Rat Ogres. So that was kind of okay. I wanted them to be in combat with the Rat Ogres because I wanted to get the Ojo thing uh, uh, working for me, but I didn't want to be charged, so... You know, it was one of those things. Oh, and I forget to, to mention uh, his special character, Squaw, Real, whatever. He rolled on the chart, and that unit has regeneration now. So, ugh. So, yeah, there's uh, there's me uh, avenging the warriors, I hope. <laughs> uh, the Chimera slams into the rear of the slaves, because they st were still turned to look at the Hellstriders, so that worked out great. And over here, the beast with the spells! He gets number six off on the clan rats. And 14 die. And there's a little spawn. Look at the spawn. Hi, spawn! 14 wounds later, I get a spawn. The clan rats do pass their panic check, though, so that's something. And the beast continues to just murderize slaves. He does take a wound for his trouble, but he murders a bunch of slaves that I still in combat and they're still steadfast. Over here in combat, uh, I get nine hits off on the Ojo thing, and I wound eight times, but he's able to save all but two because of regen. Uh, meanwhile, my BSB puts a bunch of wounds. I think he kills a Rat Ogre worth of wounds, uh, but with regen, it's hard to do anything, and he takes a wound for his trouble. So, it is it is a, a, a deadly combat. Needless to say, this is not a walk in the park. So, I'm, I'm winning combat, but it doesn't matter because he's steadfast, and I think his BSB is right behind him, so he's not going anywhere. Uh, the slaves, however, do not have the same luck as the Rat Ogres. My Chimera is able to just myrtleize a bunch of them. Uh, they are steadfast, but they're like steadfast six, and he rolls a higher than six, and they explode. Trifection doesn't take anything. I think the chariot... No, the chariot doesn't take anything either. Everything's fine. It's just the slaves are dead now. So here's top of three after movement. And as you can see, there's not a ton. Um, for the most part, the storm vermin are trying to get into combat with the mutilith. And his abomination slams into the flank of my demon prince, who's in a challenge, so he really can't do anything. There's the abomination. I think he was just trying to get the uh, two combat res, the charge and the flank, in order to help him out in this one. Uh, over here, the uh, warp, the weapons team misfires and dies. And in combat over here, Lord Tremendous, in all his might, uses the Ojo, does eight hits this time. That's right, I only rolled a five. Eight hits this time. He does not save enough. Uh, his character gets killed. 
my BSB, uh, I think, destroys another one of the Rat Ogres, and they lose combat. The Abomination breaks and flees. The Rat Ogres stay, but the Abomination is fleeing, and he's got four wounds on him, so he's almost out of this game. So here's bottom of three after movement, and as you can see, uh, for starters, the Abomination is no longer on the field. Uh, my Chimera had line of sight and range. I needed a 10 to hit him. I actually rolled a 12, so the Chimera would have hit him, but he fled off the table. He rolled really high. So how awesome is that awesome? So yeah, the Chimera did end up in the forest afterwards, but I don't care. He passed his dangerous terrain. Life is good. Uh, meanwhile, my Slanesh Chariot slams into the rear of the Rat Ogres because it's time to start mopping up. Meanwhile, the spawn just kind of looks over at the uh, clan rats. I don't know. I don't think he got into combat with them this time. Maybe he did. There's Orcish Elegance jumping into this fight because yeah, I've got to, I've got to mop up. I need points. It's game one of the GT. It's time to win, right? There's a Chimera. Uh, Trifaction scares off the Abomination, and all is glory. Uh, during my magic phase, I'm able to get Final Transmutation off on his Clan Rat unit, and I roll a 6 for his Grey Seer, who turns instantly to gold with no saves of any kind allowed, and he dies a horrible, horrible death. And I'm thrilled, because now his casting and his magic is gone, so that's huge. Magic has been a true contender in this game for me. Needless to say, I, I kill a handful more of this, uh, the, the Clan Rats, but who cares? The Grey Seer is dead, that's all I care about. Over here, it's a bloodbath. Uh, regen is the only thing that keeps him in this fight. It's ridiculous, but it's also fun. So, yeah, they uh, they all fight. Uh, a bunch of... I think I kill a couple of his handlers. I think a rat ogre gets killed. Um, yeah, one rat ogre dies worth of wounds. They they aren't... Uh, they, they lose combat. They're not steadfast. Uh, or they are steadfast, and they stay. So here's bottom of four after movement, and really the only thing that happens here is the clan rats charge, the spawn, and the storm vermin get into the beast. Which I'm a little nervous about, I don't want my beast to die, but if he has to, he has to. Yeah, there's a picture, it's like, oh god, beast survived this one. My hope was that the storm vermin wouldn't do enough to the beast to hurt him. Uh, or to kill him anyway, and that the beast could make all of his wounds through the slaves, because they only had a six up save. But, uh, and, uh, you know, with the weapon skill 2, I, I was hitting him on 3s, wounded on 2, so that was really the plan there. Right there, there's the spawn getting charged by the clan rats. And while the spawn does take 2 wounds and only does 1 back, uh, he's unbreakable, so that's cool. He doesn't die, and that's all I care about. The Beast! Oh! <laughs> The beast! Oh my God! He kills the skate. He kills a ton, a ton of the slaves. He even thunder stomps into the storm vermin and kills some of them. And the slaves, he loses combat. The slaves explode. He wins the combat. He's able to turn and face the storm vermin. They're steadfast, so they stay. But when the when the when the rats explode, the storm vermin takes some damage. The mute, the, my, my marauders take some damage. I don't care. But yeah, not only does he kill off the slaves, but he has hurt the storm vermin, and he is into them. He has turned to face them and is ready to just face melt all of them. Oh, oh, gotta love the beast. Over here, these rats won't die. I mean, I'm trying over here. I am beating on them as much as I can. I think I kill another rat ogre. I get, like, maybe one more handler, maybe not. They're still losing combat just because I have the res, but holy god, what do I have to do with this unit? So we go to bottom of four after movement, and the Hellstriders and the Marauder Horsemen just run around to harass the uh, clan rats. I'm getting ready to charge them. I just didn't want to charge them in the front with the Hellstriders because that just seemed like a bad idea. And the Chimera gets into the Rat Ogres because I'm just throwing everything I have at that unit now to kill it. There's a better picture of Trifection coming to help out. Uh, during my magic phase, I'm able to get the enchanted blades off on the beast because, you know what, he, he's got to still wound these guys, so I believe in the beast. Uh, during combat, the beast is able to kill four or five more storm for me, but he takes three more wounds. Uh, I lose this combat, but they he's, I stay because my BSB and my demon prints are right there, but oh, I was getting nervous. I didn't want to lose my beast. Not my boy! 
However, in the Rat Ogre combat, the Chimera was the tipping point. Uh, we really just melt face. Everything dies. Uh, the BSB has been in a challenge this whole time with the Master Bread Rat Ogre or whatever he is. And he killed him in this combat. And I roll boxcars. Boxcars! Which means I pass my leadership check and the BSB becomes a demon prince. And he in turn runs down the Rat Ogres when they break from combat. So there he is, right there, and uh, he just misses slamming into the rear of the uh, rat, uh, the clan rats, but my BSB, while he is considered dead for point value and stuff like that, I have a second Demon Prince on the table, and the game is starting to implode for my Skaven opponent. Which, he put up a hell of a fight, he really did, but how awesome is that? I got my BSB to ascend in the game, I love that. Uh, right here, the spawn dies. He doesn't do anything to the clan rats, and he dies, and that's fine. He was a free unit. He doesn't give my opponent any uh, uh, victory points, so that's all I care about. He held him there long enough, and that's all that matters. So in the top of five, my opponent looks at the table and just decides to call the game. Uh, he surrenders, and I win. So yeah, there's the game. There's the board at the end of the game. Uh, to be honest with you, I was going to uh, with the Hell Striders, both Demon Princes, I was going to charge his Clan Rats. Uh, my Bees probably would have died to the Storm Vermin, uh, which would have sucked and broke my heart, but then I would have turned around and magicked and, and shot them and combated them off the table in two rounds. So, Or probably just one round. So it would have been a wipe either way. He was right, but still, it was a good game, hard fought, and uh, yeah, I ended up winning. Quick timeout. Banners, 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 get you some banners. Look at the banners. You want the banners. Get some banners. Send this guy an email. Hit him up on Facebook. Look at what he does on Facebook. He's got a bunch of different samples and stuff, not just mine, uh, on there. And, yeah, they're all worthy of your army. Put them in there, especially with all the army books that are coming out. Why not? You know, you got a, you got a hardback. You got to have a hard-ass friggin' banner. So go ahead. Send him an email. Go to Facebook. Get yourself a banner. Tokens, tokens, tokens. Go ahead and get yourself some tokens. Wound counters, status effects, uh, plus one augment, plus, you know, for augments, plus, or negative one for, for hexes, all that stuff. She makes augments for everything. Potion of foolhardiness, potion of strength, potion of healing, all those potions that you take and you always forget to use. Get a token. I'm telling you, send her a t uh, an email and she makes tokens for anything and nothing is over $10. Nothing. So send it to her. They're glass, so it's cool. If you lose the game or whatever, you can smash them on the ground and they explode and it makes you feel better. It's, yeah, they're worth getting. Send her an email, figure it out. But yeah, yeah, uh, a total victory for Lord Tremendous. My opponent surrendered in top of five. I ended up losing my BSB through Ascendance, but he still was, for point cost, he was a loss. Uh, I lost my warriors to the Abomination Rat Ogre Charge because I way underestimated the Abomination. I lost my Warhounds, and that was a sacrifice I was willing to make. And I lost the Zinch Chariot, and that was a sacrifice I wasn't willing to make, but it is what it is. Uh, the Skaven player lost everything because he surrendered. So game one is a win. And I got the objective because I killed uh, his, rat, his, his special Rat Ogre guy uh, with my Demon Prince, the one that I marked with the Ojo. So it was a 20-4 to 4 win for me. Uh, one of the biggest things here was, like, my BSB turning into a Demon Prince. How cool was that? Oh, man, it hasn't happened in a long, long time, but it finally did, and, oh, great timing, too, game one in the, in the GT. That's awesome. Man, those Rat Ogres were tougher than Iron Guts. What a pain. Oh, <laughs> there was a hell of a fight. I enjoyed it, but damn. And how about... <laughs> Oh my god, the Mutilith. Making the Rado go stupid. Killing 14 clan rats and putting a spawn on the table. That pinned them in place for two rounds. Taking out the slaves. Holding off the storm vermin. And just being raw awesome. Gotta love the beast. Oh man, this was a great game and a great start for me for the GT. I really enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, uh, that'll do it for this one, guys. Uh, 
So yeah, we've we've arrived at the GT Battle Reports, number 46 to 50. Uh, I, this first one was a good one, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> yay! But yeah, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, there's four more coming, so I hope you stay tuned and see how I did in the rest of the tournament. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or complaints, feel free to put them in the comments section below, and I'll get back to you. But yeah, thanks.